Subscribe. All right, man. Hey, man. How's it going? I feel like it's been a while. Yeah, it's weird taking a week off. Yeah. But I'm so glad we took the time because we're working on a really cool project. We are. That uh, I'm, really, I'm really proud I'm really, of. Yeah, yeah, me. I'm super excited about Without it. Without giving too much away, we're getting into the music video business. Well, yeah, there you go. So You said too much. <laughs> well, we already teased that on our yeah, social. That's true. We, so, did, we did tease. So, yeah. 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 So, what's been up, man? What's been going on? Not a whole lot, man. Just uh, working, plugging along, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of staying up there. Uh, yeah. We, we went to Bruising Bites, the downtown Bruising Bites, this oh, past man. Saturday. How much fun was that? That was so much fun. I, I wanted to – I should have probably made a post or something, but it was – kudos to everybody who put that on because it was such an amazing, fun deal. Sandu Jazz. Sandu Jazz, yeah, friends see, of the show. I got to see them two two nights in a row. It was awesome. That's right. And that's the right. food was amazing, and uh, keeping it local with the with the with the beers. So it was a nice time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that Friday, so you went and saw them at Summer Tunes in the park. Summer Tunes, man, it was a hot one. Yeah, it was a hot, sticky night. It's the humidity, but it was also kind of like a, a good night for that Latin vibe you know I, you know there probably could have been a lot more people dancing but uh right it was one of those deals well you know that venue there's lots of bands that try and get people to dance but it's you got your comfy chair you know you brought your your uh your over-engineered lawn chair out there yeah you're gonna you want to chill it's been a long week um so i get that 
But yeah, that's good. I went to uh, I went to see the Stars play at Southern States. It was my first. You know, they got an MPSL team. Yeah, it looked like a nice old soccer match was played. Bro, I went in the hospitality suite. Like they are doing it proper. Like it's yeah. it's the, mint. F- the facility looks amazing. It's killer, and it was a it was a crazy game. Um, they ended up winning and went to uh, the regional finals uh, where they got. I mean, they just barely got beat in like the 124th minute, something crazy. Uh, where you know they their first season, they're one of the last eight teams That's in awesome. the entire nation, which was really cool. So that was cool to to see. And uh, I hated missing Sandy Jazz on Friday, but I was really excited to see them at uh, Walthall Park for Downtown Bruising Bites. Um, just man, really like a a great example of all the different like great things the area has to offer. Oh, you yeah. know, people are really trying to push live music, but also we got, hey, we got semi-pro soccer. You yeah. Know? We've had that, you know, HFC had a team. I actually played on that team. Um, so we've kind of had it for a little while, but it's it feels like it's starting to really pick up steam. So. Talking about footy? Yeah, football. Oh, okay. The real, the the actual football where you use your feet the majority of the time. I was going to say what I like is picking up steam is food trucks in the area. Yeah. And, uh, I got to showcase uh, some food trailers and food vendors here in the area. Even uh, one came in, came down from Laurel that was pretty good. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of good things. Food trucks are about to be – they're already a big deal, but they're about to be a huge deal in Hattiesburg. I hope so. I really I, – I, I enjoy it. I know some people who own brick and mortars might be a little hesitant, uh, you know, with food trucks on the, on the, on the verge – but uh, yeah, but it's also a great way to highlight what you have in a brick and mortar restaurant, you know. Yeah, so even definitely. if you're a traditional restaurant, like just getting a truck and yeah. and taking some of your some of your more portable recipes on on the go. Yeah, do it's little... it's like this is about like this is the Austin of Mississippi. I've been saying so it. you right yeah that's where I heard it. I just stole that from you. I apologize, uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like let's make food trucks like a thing. Yeah. So support the food trucks when you Definitely. Can, when you see one, um, yeah. And tip thirty percent, like Michael Dickerson says. That's what he says. So, I mean, I like that, but yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to eat out very often. Well, you know. Anyway, so what else we got going on? What do we have coming up? Now we we did have a big. This is not like nice, but it was Nick's Ice House, man. Nick's Ice House. I don't really know how to approach this because it's, well, it's it's big news, but it's like it's also like a tragedy. Like it's terrible, man. Nick's Ice House is like a pillar of the community. It's that place. It's it's always getting voted best dive bar. It's mm-hmm. not it's not known to be a very nice or fancy place, but it's nostalgic, and people go there. It's the coldest beer in town. Mm-hmm. The toilet uh, bar stools. You know, if you go in the men's room, your urinal is a keg mm-hmm. with ice in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's again, you know, it's kind of a ratty building, but it's also a a part of the community, and it caught on fire, which is tragic. Mm-hmm. And it happened on a night that they were doing open mic, and I gotta say that I went to an open mic a couple of weeks ago there, and what Stephen Wade Scott and Francis have been doing for that, like building it up. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's it's terrible. It's one of those, it's hard to see right now, it's hard to see the other side of the mountain, you know, like what, what good's going to come from it, really. Um, but something that, like, Stephen and Francis have worked very hard to make Wednesday night, like, a thing at Nick's. Um, I think that's a big deal, too, having weeknight fun oh, yeah. th- where the community can get involved and, and perform. Um like getting to see it, like on the last night, I, I saw Brad Clark got back up and, and played guitar for the first time in years. You know, it's like that's such a special thing, and we need stuff like that in the community. So I hope that uh, I hope that if they rebuild, it happens quickly. Or you know, I hope that that open mic uh, open mic night finds a a new home soon um, because it's it's definitely, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a it's a good thing for the community, especially after this past you know year to eighteen months we've had, um, getting people around each other and getting to perform in front of your friends. You know. Yeah, it was very promising that the day after the fire they actually had people play music out there again, and they were just outside. You know, they were next to the charred building. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I think they also made a post that they're going to they're the family that owns it is considering building back and they're just taking their time right now but I know that on the horizon is a benefit concert on August 1st at Brewski's. Okay. It's kind of a Mark Mann. Mark Mann's coming out with a new album. It's kind yeah. of like a thing for that, but it's also going to be a fundraiser to help uh, Nick's Ice House. Yeah, that's great. That's great that they're doing that. That'll be uh, August 1st, you said? August 1st. I believe okay. it's a Sunday. It's, okay. it's, it's coming Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Mann, Tatanka. Tatanka. Love that guy. Um, and he's got he's got new shirts out too. I just noticed he he's he's launching some merch as well, yep. all sleeveless. So that's something to be, keep your eye out on, uh, for as well. Oh yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, man, that's uh, I hope I hope Nick's comes back. I hope uh, I'm glad. Actually, really, the main thing is I'm just glad everybody's safe. Like something like that, man. Especially at night at a bar, you you expect the worst. Yeah. So it's so it was only things possessions that were lost and no and no humans so that's yeah i'll tell you that's uh, great that's the best that's the best part about it i had pine belt pickers practice that night and when we were leaving practice kyle kyle bowman our neighbor he basically said i think i'm gonna go to nick's and i was thinking you know i might go and then i just decided i'm i'm kind of tired from the day i'll just go home and i woke up to the news and it was just terrible news to wake up to well we're our hearts and and uh our hearts are out there for uh for the owners and for everybody involved i know also that's something hard to shake off so um yeah look for august 1st at brewski's uh the benefit concert um yeah that'll be good but uh what else we got coming up well i know that the night before that benefit is best of the pine belt awards banquet party Mm -hmm. at the convention center lake terrace right yeah specifically the lake terrace convention Mm -hmm. center who's hosting that uh well you know it's a couple couple folks uh us yes uh we're gonna MC the event we're gonna announce i wonder how other, are we gonna announce the finalists and the winners take we're gonna, forever we're gonna read an insane amount of names yeah so we might have to just poll the audience on whether or not everybody should get their name read well i said i was gonna be completely silent okay so oh, so it's all on me now I'm, yeah, I'm actually doing nothing okay. now. We are we are dressing fancy because it's a the Roaring Twenties. Yes, it's a Roaring Twenties themed party. So so uh, we're gonna be dressed like we're from the Roaring Twenties, I guess. I'm excited about that. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a good time. Yeah, and uh, Hub City Sound Machines playing music, so that'll be a, a big party. That'll be fun. It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah. It, also, that's another thing. Like I I want to win for like best podcast but also I, I don't know i'm really just looking forward to the hang i, I just want to be around people it's, and it's just nice to be nominated really 100%. you know it's, i feel like that's it i mean you know who wins whatever you know well f- for me it's like getting to see everybody that you've seen on the website you've seen like their businesses like putting faces to names of different businesses and like going oh yeah i, I know you or you know what i mean I'm, people exactly. i may not already know uh, getting to meet people, so it's going to be a fun like meet and greet, and it's supposed to be like it's a dinner and a dance. It's not like yeah. it's not supposed to be stuffy. No, you're supposed to be like it's, getting down. It's a fun night to celebrate local businesses mm-hmm. and uh, you know yeah. and enjoy time together. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, thirty bucks for a seat, and then if you want a table of ten, it's three hundred twenty-five dollars. Oh, three, um, yeah, yeah. So, thirty-five, thirty-five. Whatever. Yeah, is it thirty-five? I think it's yeah. thirty-five. So, so y- you know, yeah. Round Check round. out Signature. Y- you get it. We're incredible salespeople. Yeah. So yeah, man, uh, I'm excited about having uh, Jeff Flato. Me too. The Flatos and Tyler Flato. Okay, it's gonna be cool. They started a YouTube channel and actually had us on. They do recipe videos out of the kitchen table, uh, the the McKay's uh, business over there in Midtown, and uh, we got to cook with them. So that's actually that's being released today as well. Really? So this is a cool like little link up that we're getting to do with them. So uh hope yeah, we made hope we made the cut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think we did, man, cuz that's you remember when you remember when I wow. Well, well yeah. I don't want to yeah, I don't yeah, want to spoil. Yeah, spoil. Do there's some ridiculousness in that yeah. that episode. Be sure to watch that. Yeah, cause... man. And that link is actually in the bio so or in the description. So yeah, we're going to have Tyler and Jeff Flato right after this. Did you do something to your hair? No, this is my natural hair color. That's your natural hair color. Yeah, everybody calls me Sunshine. That's my trademark. Oh, yeah, like everybody calls you Sunshine. Look, I'm dealing with the aging process just fine, okay? Is that why your beard's still gray? (sighs) 
I know you think you look like Brad Pitt from Fight Club, but you look more like Jared Leto in his last scene in Fight Club. That's actually incredibly fair. You suck. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We're here with Jeff and Tyler Flato. How are y'all doing today? Fantastic. Awesome. Very good. And you? Man, I'm doing great. I'm excited because we're doing we're linking up here with Flatos Fine Foods. We got we got all kinds of cookies and, and goodies here today, and uh, we got to be on your your cooking show and everything. It's a big it's a big day for everyone. So, uh, what I want to know is how did Flatos Fine Foods get its start? That's an interesting question. Well, actually, uh, I started out in restaurant business in Vicksburg, waiting tables. I was working for the gas company, summer job, and I uh, made a lot of money and didn't know what I was doing, so I thought this may be a good little track. So ended up going to uh, a couple of schools, and I ended up at Southern, and Chesterfields was opening. Mm-hmm. So I walked in Chesterfields one day, and they were still under construction, and they told me to come back later. They already had a full staff, so I went somewhere else. I don't remember where. No, <laughs> it wasn't long, and I <laughs> came back, and they hired me, and uh, the rest is history, I guess. Uh, it, uh, it helped me get established and. And at least uh, showed me uh, there was a revenue stream there to uh, make some money. So I stayed with it, and uh, I got into management, and I found that uh, management was uh, really tough. I went back into the restaurant waiting because I was making probably, I don't like to discuss numbers, but a lot of money and versus the management was not a lot of money right then i thought well i, I majored in political science and and i was going to go to law school and i thought I, I probably need to get a job in my major uh that's what you did back then so i went uh, up to jackson had an interview in the warford building right there at the capitol close to it and uh they offered me a thirteen thousand a year and so that was like i don't think so i don't yeah. you know i was like i, I you just didn't really didn't I, I was already had a lifestyle of uh you know this and that debauchery and whatever and that, that would definitely not feed the you know the lion so right um, i stayed back in in restaurant business uh, right after that i uh was in the middle of opening two restaurants i was 26 and i ended up opening um we were trying to uh, i worked for a guy named jim buck and uh in jackson at, i was at new orleans cafe and they had catfish yaks and he taught me a lot and i worked under a black hat chef there and so anyway, long story short, we tried to, we had a building, we had to sign an intent to lease, and it turned out to be the Amerigos building. We had the lease first. Jim Buck had uh, worked with uh, Latham, or worked for Latham up there for a while, and uh, I think he got wind that Jim Buck was looking at this building, and so it was an old Mr. Gaddy's. You remember Mr. Gaddy's with the trees in yeah. it? Yeah. So it was on, uh, 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 I can't remember the name of the street. Anyway, it'll come to me, but uh, they were going to start road construction. And so the, uh, Buck had a, a investor, and the investor said he's no way he's putting any money in to that area when the it was two lane. They were making it three with a turn lane, and so hence Latham got in there and opened Amerigos, and that was that. But I had another guy I was working with, and we opened Cafe Lanyap down in Slidell, and I worked with a, a chef from Quarter Two Sisters there, and uh, it was semi-successful, but uh, there were some issues, so it kind of went by the wayside and from there i closed and uh mike ford and james ram were opening rocket city in huntsville Hmm. and so they called me and uh, i had a bunch of equipment they bought it and i went up there and worked and uh eventually became manager and then stayed there some happened with the management company they were with and it kind of fell apart so i left there and went to friday's is this too long of a story no it's cool so. <laughs> this is this is we asked how it started so i'm not gonna like cut you off so i ended up working Bash for friday's and and uh that was probably some of my best training as far as uh paperwork managerial not chef wise mm-hmm. but teaching me the the real financial realm of restaurant business and business in general and the it was a year training for a manager back then uh, it was six months just in the bar, three days on the dish machine. So the tra- I don't know what they do now, but the training then was really intense. Everything was homemade, including the French fries and the Italian dressing. There was nothing. They didn't have a freezer, which is unheard wow. of today. So anyway, I learned there. And then they opened Rocket City here while I was there. I was driving an hour and a half commute every day in Houston to work. And I, I roved as a manager in five or six different Fridays. 
and they called me and said would you like to come back we got problems here at this rocket city and we need some help and i thought about it for about 13 seconds and i said yeah and uh they paid me a lot of money and i came and uh, they had some issues and i can say that i think i probably saved that business uh from going south rocket uh, city diner rocket city Diner. oh man I love even with place. the sales there was just a lot of waste and this and that so mm-hmm. i came in and applied those things that i learned at friday's uh, probably if I hadn't worked for Friday's, I couldn't have done what I did, but right. uh, we got back on track and were very successful, and I got a piece of it. And then uh, while I was there, uh, I started my catering business on the side, okay. and eventually, uh, you know, things just got kind of old, and, and so I needed to move on, and, and uh, I uh, rented the building that I'm in now in Pedal, and then I eventually bought it. I had a partner, and we... Uh, had a couple of restaurants and we were in the catering business we did a lot of work uh, weddings we did a lot of for Howard Industries the uh, mm-hmm. corporate you know stuff like that and then uh, we parted ways when we when I got in the cookie business the cookies came from uh, we did cheese straws and we did different kinds of cookies for weddings and somebody said one day you need to take these to Atlanta and to the market and sell them and so I'm you know I'm not that bright so I said sure I'll do it that's a fine so we'll try it so I put them in little craft bags with a label and so it was probably 12 years of of a lot of lost money uh another (laughs) master's degree (laughs) right from harvard and uh but eventually uh we found our way in that and uh we tried a lot of different things and one day we heather and i said we're we need to we need to focus and and either make this thing work or get out of it and just stay in the catering and so uh we uh, heather actually my partner and I split. He it was pretty amicable, but he went back and, and did his thing. He really got into doing these uh, uh, feedings for power outages and that type of thing, oil field, and he did pretty well with that, and that was his specialty. But Heather and I decided uh, we needed to really focus on the cookie business and cheese straws. So she, I said, we need something different. I really want to do a, a, a shortbread cookie. Like my grandmother used to make these crescents, and I just ate them till I was, you know, overweight and uh loved them and uh my mom made some like that too but they weren't as good as ours so we we tried them or i did and mine were like good but they last about three days right they won't work in our business you know it's got to go nine months eight months Mm. so heather got in uh recipe books and uh she started baking at home and i came home one day and she's outside with a ziploc bag and a hammer she's beating these peppermint candies to death and so that candy went into the cookie and so she came up with the idea of the it wasn't my idea of the candy in the cookie i wanted the shortbread cookie but she right. implemented oh that's cool yeah it was pretty neat so it's a good story and it's true and i'm like what the hell is she doing she's beating the <laughs> you know what out of the bag and i didn't know what was in the bag at first you know whether it was a small <laughs> child or a dog or you know like what's uh, happening right now it's like what are you so, doing? so, so. the flat toast fine foods is very much a, a family affair then right that that it's it's run by a family from here it's not like you know there's lots of businesses that say they're a family business but yeah it's like how much how much day-to-day is really being run by the family but that's that's the case with you guys yeah we run it uh, you know a lot of people call and ask do you guys make your own product because a lot of smaller companies have it co-packed so they don't make they buy it which is another wrong that we actually co-pack for other people but we make everything whether that's good or bad we talked about having it co-packed but you really have a lot of less control and by the time you get through, you don't make a whole lot of money. Mm. I, I investigated, but but yeah, we're truly you know with Tyler's in the business now, and all my kids have worked there. <laughs> Tyler continues to. Uh, Heather worked there at one time. She was really uh, wanted to be in the medical field, and so she left, and 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 uh, that's what she does. But she was real uh, instrumental in getting you know the product out that really you know took us to that next level yeah because before that we weren't really doing that well we were floundering around with not much mm. so so it, that was a turning point for so you that guys. was a turning point definitely that's definitely awesome turn, definitely that's turning awesome point. well and now with tyler like this is the that you've kind of pivoted uh since covid you have your own youtube channel you have your recipe videos uh that you know with the cookie man it's 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 fun to watch uh it's it's entertaining but it's also like I feel like a lot of those recipes I could actually do at home. You know, it's not like over my head where sometimes you watch those videos and you're like, yeah, that's cool, but I I can't do that. <laughs> so it's accessible. So I, I that's that's probably my favorite part about it. Uh, Tyler, what was – how did that come to be? How did you convince Dad to – that we were, hey, we're going to film you and put you on the Internet? Uh, okay. So 
back in high school, we had this the run. You know, Bruce Almighty when he's like this news, his catchphrases, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. So in high school, we always we would say that a bunch. And um, my buddy Peyton Snyder, he was re- he's real good at editing. So for football, at the end of fall camp at Southern Miss, there was a skit night. And we'd edit, and we'd make a funny video, and everybody would love this, the specialist video that he would edit. So one day, he started calling himself the Cookie Man out of nowhere. And I was thinking, I was like, that's the way the cookie crumbles with the Cookie Man. And then we, I was thinking of like what he could do to include like a local crowd in Hattiesburg. And I came up with like interviewing people that are almost similar to him in the similar you know area of food and uh production stuff like that and then we started getting in the recipes and that just with the kitchen table helping us it's, it's kicking off and it's something like you said you it's easy to make like you said you see a lot of videos on facebook of you like these ridiculous dishes of like you know what I'm, I'm trying to... Ex- Chateaubriand? Yeah, 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 stuff I like that. Yeah, can't and pronounce then, like, the Julia ingredients. Julia Child. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, he's putting, minutes, yeah. he's cooking green beans with a little Parmesan and butter on them. And, like, mm-hmm. who can't do that? Yeah. And with COVID, a lot of people started turning to trying to learn how to cook. And I just thought it was, like, a good time to kind of try and ease into that and mm-hmm. make it easy and accessible for anyone that wants to try and cook. We were sitting around losing a lot of money, so, I mean, why not lose <laughs> yeah. a little bit more? <laughs> Essentially, what do we, do? we had time to think, really. Though. Right? I think that a lot we of did. People, we had a lot of time. To you think. guys probably the same thing. You, you found well, you know, I got, I can, I can maybe clean something up or you know get yeah. the garage straight. I did some of that, and we did a lot of projects. And then he came up with that idea. And then Peyton, who he mentioned, is sitting right there. Uh, you know, he does a great job filming it, and uh, it, that's important, as you guys know. You, it's, it's, it's very important to have the right equipment and the right people. Yeah, Peyton does a great job because editing. You know, if you that's film, horrible. If yeah. you film for an hour, you're editing for at least three. It's, you know, it's, it's just how it's tough. That's Madness how it goes. Work. So yeah, he does a great job, and yeah, man, I'll, doing that while you're kicking balls for for the the Golden Eagles too. That's yeah. that's pretty impressive too. Yeah, you know? so, that's right. Yeah, he's busy. Uh, yeah, going to school, doing that, and helping us. And uh, I think the recipe segment we were at Kendrick and Jennifer's at mm-hmm. the kitchen table one day interviewing them. And I was sitting there, and we talked about it, doing it at my house, and I had a sign. I think I was making a sign for it, and we're going to do it in small perimeter quarters and put the sign in the window that didn't look too good and kind of hide things. And and I said, why not just do it? He's got the the ovens. He's got the range. All he's got the all the equipment. You could ever have and he's got products that he wants to sell, so it could yeah. be a, a, a Joint. You know, win-win deal where people come in. And really, you're right. For our show, that that's almost uh, – not better than the interviews but it's 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 hands-on and people can go yeah i can cook green beans Mm -hmm. and a lot of people can't cook Mm -hmm. or they think they can't really if you can read directions you can cook but (laughs) if somebody shows you hey we'll do some green beans with some parmesan and some olive oil and bam you know so i think i think that maybe that's part of the mission as well is to you know spread the fact that you can eat healthy and yeah not expensively and and do it quickly and still have time to you know raise your kids or beat your kids or whatever you'd like to do with your kids <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> no that's huge though being able to eat healthy and then being able to cook for yourself i mean it just you save a ton of money doing that and you know exactly what goes into the food too that's the other thing when you eat out you're not i mean yeah, yeah. you can trust places but it's like i don't know yeah i don't know i missed out on some of that that process so i like that and i love that the kitchen table you know they do those those cooking classes where mm-hmm. where you yeah. shoot so whenever somebody watches those videos that's basically what it's like to be at a kitchen table cooking class that yeah. place looks like a television studio it's, yeah. insane. it's super nice it's like walking in because we me and jamie got to be on that that show where we we cook some steak and i cook <laughs> some other stuff not on purpose <laughs> oh yeah uh, i'm not gonna say a mit, a mit, a mit, straight a fire <laughs> episode. dude that that episode is fire for yeah. sure um <laughs> but yeah, the sorry. mitten sales went up over yeah there, mitten. Though, yeah Kenneth's happy <laughs> Yeah, everybody wants an extra mitt now in case it burns. So, right, I mean, there you go. You know, there you, you know, go. there's always fallout. <laughs> Dude, I knew something like that was going to happen, but it was it, man, was it was perfect. It was so much fun and and also I feel like you get to see like with your show you get to see uh more of who the people are when they cook cuz that's very personal like what I'm cooking for you like for me steak is very I don't really like to eat steak from a restaurant cuz yeah. I'm very like defensive of how yeah. I cook it you know it's that's that's how you find out who people are same thing with your business like you talk about your business for a little while you kind of figure out 
Like mm-hmm. you learn a lot about who that person is. So that's that's what's really cool about that show. I really enjoy it. But uh, yeah, we like talking about business, but also we're not. Me and Jamie are pretty ridiculous. We're not really. Well, I guess we're we're are we business guys? Yeah. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a game. We're gonna have a cookie taste test, where we're basically just gonna let you eat a cookie and you're gonna tell us what flavor it is. Okay. And All then right. if you win, you get a prize. <laughs> yeah. I hope I win. Let's see what happens. Yeah. You <laughs> amazing all right this is our yeah this is our cookie taste test we're we're gonna put you to the test so the way this works is we give you a cookie jeff and and then you taste it and then you try and tell us what flavor it is bonus points if you know the brand so how long do i have uh when when the music stops jamie's gonna play a beat when his music stops you have to have an answer it's like musical chairs basically but this reminds me of pin the tail on the donkey the last time i had (laughs) blindfold on i think all right i'm gonna hand you a cookie here and away we yeah. well that's a big cookie i'm thinking the pecan sandy mm. Mm. this guy <laughs> that's coconut cookie. it's a cookie taste the cookie taste, 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 taste the cookie what kind of cookie do you taste taste taste, taste the cookie taste the cookie taste 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 30 more seconds to go. I'm good. Oh, and stop. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> what kind of cookie are you eating? Gosh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Literally. Literally. <laughs> uh, well, it's not coconut. Mm-hmm. No, you know, I don't think I can get this one. It's a, it's a snickerdoodle. Bummer. Loft house snickerdoodle. Look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get a glimpse. All right, oh, now no. we have Tyler's going to. Gonna give you our next cookie. All right. And we're playing music. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Taste the 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 cookies. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Feel the cookies. Taste the cookies. Taste the cookies. Taste the cookies. This tastes like a lemon snap. That is correct. That's correct. That is correct. It is a lemon snap. That's Maddie's Sweet Shop that's available, mm. right? Mm. Yeah, at Flatos yeah. Fine yeah. Foods. That's your Ooh, lemon. Yeah. It needs a little more lemon in it. <laughs> needs more lemon. A little more lemon. Control going down. We'll have to have a meeting in the morning. Next cookie on its way. Cookies. 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 This is just going to be me cookies. struggling with packaging. <laughs> Shut up. A little bit of production. Never heard of any more cookies. Feel the cookie, taste the cookie, cookie, cookie. smell the cookie. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a weird-shaped cookie. It's almost like a bell shape. Interesting shape. How does it taste? 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 Is it like an archer's cookie? Oh, oh, oh. And we're ready for your guess. It's not gingerbread. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. It is. It is Madeline's. Archer made by Archers. No. Oh. Madel- Madeline's. Madeline's. What's the What's the? It's from flavor. It's It's little French cakes. Really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyler, hit it. Next one. All right, Tyler, with the next cookie. This is a lot harder than I thought. It was. Oh, this is crazy hard. <laughs> That's a weird shaped cookie. That Madeline's. <laughs> Can you, can you see the cookie? Taste the cookie. You know the cookie. This is cookie. 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 This is... This is... Oreo. <laughs> yeah! Easy. Quick. Easy. Nice. Easy. Nice. All right, next. What you got? I'm two for two. Someone I'm two, two out of four. Here we go. Batting 500. Hold your hand out for the cookie, the cookie, the cookie. Chocolate with the chocolate drop in the middle. Yeah, it's a sugar cookie with fudge icing. So yeah, we we'll give, give it to him. We'll give it. We'll give it. 
We'll give it to nice. you. Nice. We'll give it to you. There is cookie in there. Is that a Keebler product? Uh, this is actually uh, this is actually thumbprint, thumbprint. Uh, cookies. Thumbprint. Yeah. There's so many cookie distributors. It's crazy. Yeah, which yeah. one I gave them. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, pre-taste. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Hold your hand up for the next cookie. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We are not ready. We're just to teasing you. <laughs> we are not ready to. Oh. Feel it on the cookie. Smell the cookie. Get to know the cookie. Now taste it. Chew for a moment. Get to know the cookie, the flavor. Hold up. Don't guess. Don't guess. Now guess. Butterscotch. Yes. Correct. correct. Well done. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Round last one. Here ball. we go. Cookie. It's a cookie. Taste the cookie. Feel the cookie. Smell the cookie. Get to know the cookie. It's got some chocolate in it. Smell the chocolate. Chocolate chip, uh, uh, Pepperidge Farm chocolate chip. Mm. Oh, you get some pepper. It is, it is chocolate chip. It's Chips Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. So that's it. And that's it. Kind of give it to you. It's chocolate chip cookie. You got that. That is it. Yes, yeah. sir. Man, there that was. Go. Hey, you're a great sport. We appreciate you doing I that. Enjoyed it. I'll do that anytime. <laughs> get to taste test cookies. That's not bad living. I'll eat any. I mean, I'll do that all day. Not a problem. I like it. That's right. It's that's awesome. Here now, I should have brought my glasses. <laughs> now, sugar. Now though, like. You know, you guys are a multi-talented family. Tyler's actually in the running for best vocalist, best solo artist, mm-hmm. and best of the Pine Belt. That's mm-hmm. awesome. And did you bring your guitar? I did. So do you want, can me and Jamie, like, remix one of your original yes, tunes? I would love that. All right, let's get it. After this, we're going to try not to ruin one of Tyler Flato's original tunes. <laughs> Man, you did great. That was awesome. All right, this is now the Hardy Street Boys remix of Tyler Flato's Savannah. Take it away, Tyler. Let's do it. We 
wish I could have heard from you Not that you even care Bet you're the brightest star Shining on the river walls And I know you're making some dudes Not underneath some Spanish mind I know Savannah Why you gotta be so far You know that I can't make it Dirty beat a car, no Savannah. Don't know what to do. I'm stuck here holding her, but I'm still loving you. Oh, Savannah. Tyler Flatter, ladies and gentlemen, check him out. Savannah, we hope you win Best of the Pine Belt for Best Single, what is it, Solo Act? Yeah. Bro. We hope you guys win the best ever podcast ever. We're going to win that Pine Belt. It's a literal belt made of pine. <laughs> Make sure you check out Flatto's Fine Foods. Subscribe to them on YouTube. Link is in the description below. Have a great week. We'll see you later. Oh, and the thunder, too? Perfect. That was perfect.